I've got a Zigbee problem. Hey guys, I've mentioned, I've got a Zigbee problem. And it's a serious one. I mean it. What you see are the Zigbee end devices. And if you're using my favorite CC2531, which I've been recommending for ages, then end devices are your doom, because without properly developed mesh network, you will reach the uh, limit of how many devices you can directly connect to a CC2531 really quickly. And since I've started to add Zigbee sensors to pretty much everything, I've quickly reached my limit. Well, it started with my smart home heating, which uses 11 different uh, sensors for temperature. Then it's a smart door, which uses extra sensors to monitor whether the door is open or locked. And all the different sensors that I've covered to switch on the lights, etc. I've started to experiment with CC2530, but even though they're quite affordable, I wasn't happy for a couple of reasons. First, they are still not recommended for Zigbee 3.0, and this is where every device is heading. Now, my next purchase was this monster. This is CC2538-CC2592DK. Yes, I'm reading this. And this is a powerful board capable of uh, withstanding up to 100 devices without any problems, but the problem was that it's actually quite difficult to program, so it stays in my shelf forever. So for once I've decided to make my life easier and I went with a recommended device instead, which brings me to Llama. Electro Llama to be precise, and the CC2562R which is the stick I'm going to show you how to use so you wouldn't destroy the boot, flash it properly and start using as quick as possible and enjoy up to 200 devices in your mesh network. Well, technically it's 50 devices directly with the coordinator, but if you have a developed network, then you have up to 200 devices, which you know how it works. I was recommending CC2531 for one single reason. First, you could get it pre-flashed on IT at store, so you don't have to mess with it. And second reason, it's very inexpensive, so you can get one for about $5. I do recognize that Llama is much more expensive. However, investing in Zigbee network and increasing the number of supporting devices from 15 to 20 to 50 to 200, it's probably worth the price. When ordering Llama, you have two choices. You can either order the Electro Llama coordinator itself, or you can order one with the Booger uh, add-on. Now the booger isn't going to be needed, so it's optional, uh, it's for JTAG, and it's for when you destroy the boot in a process. So, well, you don't have to, if you follow this tutorial. I've ordered one and it's been promptly sent to me. There's sometimes waiting lists because those are on short stock, so make sure you get notified if you want to get one. The Electrolama is super simple to use, it has a only one button which you press and hold when you want to uh, put it in the boot mode, so remember that, we're going to need this in a moment. And yeah, put the cover on and uh, put the antenna on and plug it to your PC, because we're going to use a Windows to do it. Initially, I had some problems running my Llama. I quickly discovered it is unfortunately prone to interference from Raspberry Pi, so do yourself a favor and take USB extension cable and keep the Llama as far away from your Raspberry Pi as possible for the best experience. Now there is a download list of the software that you have to download, including drivers and Texas Instrument Flash software. So I'm gonna link these in my article associated with this video. So in the description of this video, you're gonna find everything you need, plus everything I'm going to say and write, it's gonna be in that article. Now that you have everything installed, simply press the button and hold, plug it to your computer without letting it go, and after a second or two, let it go. Now that you're ready to flash it, select the correct board. It's CC2562R. Don't forget that. Then select your hex file you downloaded. Make sure you're downloading a correct hex file. If you download incorrect file, you'll destroy your boot and you'll have to, well, get a JTA cable and then get that adapter shipped to you and then you'll be able to restore it. But it's a complicated process as well. 
So double check everything. What you want is a coordinate of firmware. Well, unless you're flashing the stick to use it as a router. So select correct one and then click following options. Erase, flash and verify. Then hit play. That's it. You're done. Okay, that only took a couple of moments, but your stick won't work just yet. You'll have to modify the configuration YAML on your Zigbee 2MQTT. So open that app and type in those lines. First, you have to specify which port is being used. It's slightly different with this one because it has a prefixed path for your USB port for Raspberry Pi that is. Now, you'll also have to add that advanced uh, flag in here. So just simply grab it and add it to your configuration YAML with the correct indent. Set it to false and you are all set. Now, you should be able to happily boot Zigbee 2MQTT without any errors. If that's the case, then congratulations, you are now sporting Llama and you can enjoy a bigger list of devices. Now, it's too early for me to pass any judgments at this point and I'll be testing it for the next couple of weeks and see how I like it. But if you're interested in how to either add new devices to your Zigbee network, I already have a tutorial in here. And I also have a separate tutorial which covers how to add unsupported devices. So if you come across a device, a Zigbee device that isn't supported just yet, you can figure out your drivers and it's not that difficult. The tutorial is here as well. All right, guys, I hope it worked for you just as well as it worked for me and you're gonna enjoy your Zigbee Llama or Electro Llama. As for now, if you want to know more about how I'm gonna add new features to my network using Zigbee, then you probably want to stick around and, well, I do not have a posting schedule, so use YouTube tools. A lot of other YouTubers probably taught you how to do all that YouTube stuff, but I would strongly recommend you to maybe follow me on Twitter, which is the best way to get in touch, especially that often YouTube decides to filter out the comments for no reasons. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Letting it go, and after a second or two, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah.